Hey, brother, it's great to be here, great to be in the studio, and great to have the opportunity to speak to our WTLN listeners. And things are going wonderfully at Cornerstone. In fact, we are preparing for our January Call for Discernment conference that we're very excited about and looking forward to seeing how the Lord will work through this conference. The conference is entitled Hope and the Homosexual Agenda, and we're going to address this very sensitive issue, but it's a very prevalent issue. We see it uh, across our country. We see it through media, through TV, through print, and just becoming a very hot-button issue even for the church today. And we're grateful to have with us uh, Mike Gendron. Mike is going to be our speaker, our guest speaker for the conference. And Mike is with Proclaiming the Gospel Ministries. How are you doing today, Mike? Well, I am so blessed. It's good to be a part of the conference. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, we're really looking forward to you coming. Thanks for taking up your time to, to be here with us. And I was thinking about the conference, and one of the the questions that we often get is why take the time to do a conference like this, and why spend time on this particular issue? How would you answer somebody with that kind of a question? Well, it's an issue that's definitely affecting the church today. We feel that the homosexual agenda is very aggressive, not only in our culture and society, but it's also aggressively trying to make inroads into our churches. And so we look at the homosexual movement today, and it presents an alarming test for the church. In one sense, you could say we're at a fork in the road. We can either hold fast to the unchanging truth of Scripture and its condemnation of all sexual sin, or we can cave into the pressure of society and compromise the truth. And I'm just so thankful for a church like Cornerstone that is willing to take a stand and actually be a model for other churches, not only in their community, but also in their state and throughout the country and even the world. We really do need to take a stand for the truth because we know that if we start compromising the gospel in order to attract more people into our churches, that a compromised gospel has no power to save sinners from the power and the punishment of their sin. So we thank Cornerstone for the opportunity to make this message known. We pray that not only will people come to the conference, but other churches will also tune in to the messages that I'm sure will be available on Sermon Audio. Yes, sir, they certainly will be. And yeah, we're very, very grateful to have you here with us for that conference and, and grateful for the opportunity the Lord has given us to be able to to do that. You, know, you mentioned um, the fact that homosexuality is in the context of the Bible's uh, condemnation of all sexual sin. Is this a kind of a thing where we're just setting out to pick on homosexuality in particular? Or would you say that uh, from the scripture that homosexuality is condemned like other sexual sin? Well, no, we're not picking on homosexuals. In fact, uh, I am coming down for the reason of having a great compassion for those who are self-deceived or they've been deceived by what they've been reading about their sin. But as you made the good point, all sin is condemned by God, and we're not isolating homosexuality. We're merely looking at what the culture is now calling it as a normal behavior. Hmm. In fact, um, there is a common expression now among the Protestant churches that you can be a gay Christian, hmm. and it's impossible to be a gay Christian because... A Christian is one who has been sanctified, set apart by the truth, and is now being progressively sanctified by putting to death the evil deeds of the flesh and conforming their lives to the life of Christ. And so to say that there are gay Christians would be also to say that there are adul adulterous Christians or habitual lying Christians. You know, when a person is born again, they have a new nature and a new heart, and that heart is turned toward Christ, and, and we have a desire to please Him by doing the things that He has called us to do. Amen. And turning from our sin and turning toward His command to be holy as He is holy. Yeah, praise the Lord. And you know, so what would you say then, Mike, would be the, the primary responsible responsibility of the church uh, with respect to this subject? Well, we need to speak the truth in love. We need to do it by showing compassion we cannot compromise with the truth of the gospel. And when you look at our country, I know that many people are lamenting the spiritual crisis that is undermining our once great nation. But when we look at the church being the moral compass for our nation, if the church is not leading the way and contending against all sin, 
then there's no hope for our country. We'll continue to spir- spiral downward into a cesspool of more and more sin. And so I think the church needs to lead the way. The church needs to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. And also we need to be proclaiming the gospel because that's the only hope for anybody who is trapped in sin. The power of the Holy Spirit is the only power that can overcome the sinfulness of man. And so that's the duty of the church and each individual Christian is to have compassion for those who are trapped in sin, enslaved by the devil to do his will. We need to point to Christ as their only hope. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you for spending some time with us to answer our questions. And for you listening out there, we hope that you'll join us. We pray this will be very, very helpful to Christians out there who uh, need information, uh, maybe need confidence in how to address the, as Mike said, the aggressiveness of the movement, and too, as, as part of the church, to respond lovingly. Uh, to respond uh, not in a quarrelsome way, uh, but in a loving, gentle way with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to those who are enslaved and entrapped by this uh, this movement and this lifestyle. And so please join us, our 2015 Call for Discernment Conference entitled Hope and the Homosexual Agenda. It's going to be January 23rd through the 25th, 2015 at Cornerstone Baptist Church. We're at 3370 Snow Hill Road. That's Chuliota, Florida, 32766. You can find more information online at hopeintruth.org or you can call us on our phone at the church 407-971-7685. God bless you and we look forward to seeing you there.